To send 10,000 cold DMs per month, you're gonna have to do a little hacking. Cold outreach and specifically DM outreach is honestly the best way to get clients. There is hands down no strategy that I know of that converts higher than cold outreach through DMs. I think when it comes to DM outreach, most people aren't doing enough. They'll send a couple messages here and there, but honestly, you should be optimizing to be trying to send a thousand messages per day because it's all a numbers game, right? Like the more at bats I get, the more opportunities I have to hit a home run. So the more messages you send, the more opportunities you have to get in clients. So I send out thousands of messages a month using automations. So automations make your life a whole lot easier. You should not be doing any sort of outreach manually. If you're not using automations, I have several videos on how to use automations and a whole course on how to do it. But most big social platforms that have a way to send out messages, there's usually already an automation tool that's already built out, some sort of software that's built out to automate messages on that platform. Now, once you're automating messages, the thing you'll run into is the limits. So each platform has their own specific limits just so that they don't have a whole bunch of spammers on their platform. So you'll reach those limits pretty quickly. So in order to send 10,000 DMs per month, we have to scale with duct tape. And by that, I mean, there's no easy, seamless, integrated way to scale cold DMs like there is with like paid ads. Like with paid ads, you can just increase your budget on how much you wanna spend per day. But with cold outreach, we have to resort to some black hat tactics in order to scale. So I'm gonna go platform by platform and we will start with Facebook. I love doing Facebook outreach. I, it got me the highest quality leads. And with one Facebook account, you can send about 50 messages per day. And if you wanna push past that limit, you can, but you just have to be really active. So I pushed it to like 70 per day, uh, but there's something that I learned from an employee at Facebook. They said for most of the Facebook tools, like Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp, you have uh, the past two weeks of history is what they really focus on. So if you're not active for two weeks and then all of a sudden you start doing a whole bunch of activity, they're gonna notice that's a little fishy. But if you were already sending 50 messages a day for the past two weeks and then the next day you sent 60 messages, it's like that's not very different from your previous two weeks. So I would slowly ramp it up over time in order to pass the limit of 50. I think Facebook's real limit is 150. And that's also true for WhatsApp and Instagram. I just like to keep it at 50 just to stay safe. Uh, but again, I've also pushed past the seven. Now you don't really have to worry about your personal account getting banned. I, I see a lot of people worrying about that. You don't really have to worry because even if your personal account does get banned, Facebook makes it really easy to get your account back. I've never seen someone who got their personal account banned on the platform who wasn't able to get their account back because Facebook, what they're really looking for is just to make sure that you're a real person. So they'll make you do some capture things, make you verify your email or whatever. But there's just a lot of bot accounts on the platform. So that's why they make you do this. So if you want to scale Facebook, it's pretty linear. So you have one account that can send 50, two accounts, 100, three accounts, 150 and so on. So I created one fake account and I bought two more accounts from a website called Account Farm. I don't think the website works anymore, but I'll try to put a link in the description of a website where you can buy Facebook accounts. I paid like $5 for the accounts. You shouldn't be spending more than $20 for fake accounts. But when you're creating or buying a new account, you wanna make sure you do a few things very carefully. Whenever you're signing into this new account, you want to create a new Chrome profile and sign in on there. You also wanna use proxies and there's a tool called Hide My Account that allows you to load the proxies on the account. There's a whole video that my friend Joss made that you can watch in the description below. Also, if you're creating an account, I'd recommend you use a girl profile just because people respond better to girls. Also, you just wanna add yourself and anyone else you know as a friend on this brand new account just so it kind of warms up the account a little quicker. A few extra little things I like to do is just creating a post that says, hey, I'm sorry, my old account got hacked. Then I like to go into job board Facebook groups. So let's just say like media buyer, cold callers, web designers, coaches, you name it. And you go in there, let's just say you're going into a web design Facebook group. You're gonna go in there and post a job as if you're looking for somebody. So you say, hey, I'm looking for a website build out. I'm willing to spend $10,000. And then you'll get tons and tons and tons of people responding to you, commenting on that post and sending you friend requests. And so that will warm up your account pretty quickly. Also, you do not want to use your exact name and don't use the exact same profile photo. And with Instagram, it's kind of the same way. So you'll create the profiles on the proxies. You'll warm up the account by connecting with other people and then sending out your outreach. Something that also works well on these platforms is that if you sign in from your phone, that makes it look a little more human on Facebook's perspective because mobile phones have their own specific proxies and so if you're signing in on a phone it looks a lot less fishy because if you're just signing in on a computer on an Instagram account like no one uses Instagram on the computer and so if you're just doing that Facebook's a lot more likely to shut your account down and for LinkedIn I think it's a lot easier to scale LinkedIn just because a lot of people are using LinkedIn outreach and so there's a lot more uh, options or a lot of people kind of working on this problem of scaling LinkedIn outreach now you don't have to buy multiple accounts when starting out there are a couple tools that allow you to send past the LinkedIn limit so LinkedIn limits you at 20 connection requests per day, but you can do 100 connection requests per day using a tool called Wallaxy. It's an automation tool. There's also several other automation tools that allow you to do the same thing. And then there's also people like on Fiverr that will allow you to send in-mails. So you can send like up to 6,000 in-mails per month. And if you want to scale even further, you can buy LinkedIn profiles. So there's a website called getaia.io. It allows you to buy more accounts per month. And if your account gets banned that you bought from them, they'll replace it with another brand new account. Now, when you're doing this cold outreach, you want to make sure that you track where your calls are coming from. Because I see a lot of people that are doing LinkedIn, they're doing Instagram, 
Instagram, they're doing Facebook, they're doing everything that they can, and they're not tracking where the calls are coming from, so they're doing Instagram for months and months and months, and they haven't gotten a single call from Instagram, and so you're wasting your time doing Instagram. So this is the sheet that I use to track my sales calls. I'll put a link in the description below so that you can copy it if you want to. But as you can see, we have the appointment date, the name, the channel it came from, the setter if you have other setters, you know, and then you can have picked up, interested, qualified, unqualified, no show, or closed. And so I like to look at this and see where are most of my calls coming from. You can add more in here, but right now I have, let's say, LinkedIn or Facebook or WhatsApp or iMessage. As we can see, iMessage and WhatsApp is in here, but we have a lot of Facebook. We have Instagram, Facebook inbound, Facebook inbound, Facebook inbound. So it looks like inbound's working really well. Facebook's working well. We have a couple of Instagram, but we also not just want to track the sales calls, but which ones are closing. Like, where's the money actually coming from, you know? And so we have, okay, this one closed. That's from Facebook. We had this one closed. That's from inbound. Okay, inbound works pretty well. All right, Facebook, Facebook, two in a row. Awesome. All right, Facebook. So for me, Facebook was working really well. And so I should continue to scale Facebook even further because that's what was working really well for me. If I scroll down further, we have emails working. We have inbound through YouTube was working. Awesome. Email, Twitter. Okay, Twitter is working a little bit that's where money's coming from there let's focus a little more on twitter try to get that ramped up as well so we want to make sure that we're tracking these things so we're not wasting time on things that are unimportant because if you're booking a whole bunch of calls or trying to book a whole bunch of calls through instagram and you have several accounts running on instagram and you have people responding but no booked calls are coming in or no closed deals are coming in maybe you're getting a ton of booked calls but they're all unqualified and no one's actually paying you through instagram so why do we even need to keep doing instagram if everybody's unqualified no one's paying us let's focus on something else now twitter is kind of its own separate beast they have a limit of 500 per day so you don't really have to worry about limits on twitter but also it's really hard to find most people's audiences on twitter like it's probably really hard to find plumbers on twitter if you're targeting plumbers you know but if your audience is on twitter it's worth reaching out on there as well okay so what's the actual numbers how do we get to 10,000 per month it's actually pretty easy to do if you scale multiple strategies so this is broken down day by day then we have a daily total and then after 20 days this is what your total is so if you have two facebook accounts twitter account linkedin account instagram your daily total will be 800 per day which would be 16,000 messages for the month which is crazy for most people twitter probably won't work for you so you can use a linkedin email strategy which we have in the program and you have facebook two accounts on there linkedin email strategy and then instagram and then your daily total is 500 really you just need to be doing 500 per day in order to reach your 10,000 per month and for me realistically if i was starting all over again i would do four facebook accounts and then also linkedin and on top of that i still would do email and sms but that's a whole separate video if i'm sending 500 messages per day there's no reason i'm getting at least one sale per day like you should be able to get easily get a solid six sales calls per day with this and that's minimum i've got a program where we give you access to the automation tools that you need and we help you set up the automations and optimize your cold outreach to get as many calls as humanly possible so if you're interested in that you can book a call with my team below i'll talk to you guys soon